All right. Good Monday morning, everyone. Yay. All right. So you guys are listening to Author Talk with me, Amy Fern Russell. And our lovely guest today is Ann Charles. That name just like flows. Ann Charles. I love it. But you guys, we hope you guys are having a great Monday and that we can make it better. But let me tell you about my weekend. Okay. I know. Whatever. Russell's going to give me a lot of hate on this. So be prepared. I went to my first Comic-Con as an attendee and not on the vendor side. Let me tell you something. I took my mother with me who was dying to go and my nephew with me who's 12. And we had the best time. So we went Friday evening, all day Saturday. And there were so many awesome vendors. There was this vendor there that had mystery licensed like uh, merchandise from different movies, games, all of this. And there were mystery boxes and you picked which one you wanted and you got at least five items licensed um, in the box. And that was the coolest thing. I got the Frozen 2 one for my girls or my mom did. I got my nephew a lifesaver from a course, Crimson Dawn. You guys know I love them. But it was so much fun. But Ewan McGregor was there, Stephen Emil, who plays Green Arrow. And you guys know I'm a sucker for Green Arrow. So I got my nerd on this weekend, and it was just so much fun. Like, it was just everything I thought it was going to be. No, Russell, I didn't dress up this time. Good morning, Greg. I didn't want to scare my mother on her first, you know, Comic-Con. But I did tell her next time I'm going to. I'm trying to convince Josh to go. But the superhero uh, car show and Comic-Con in San Antonio was fantastic. It was so well organized. The unlimited popcorn was so great. I don't know how many times we refilled it because it was wonderful. And UTSA football players were volunteering. You guys know I graduated from UTSA. So that was kind of cool to see all that back in action, though I did graduate a long time ago. We're not going to talk about when, but it was a long time ago. But what did everybody else do this weekend? Fern, what did you do this weekend? So this weekend, I spent time with Ellen Seaton because she and I are doing a collaboration with uh, through WIVLA, Women in the Visual and Literary Arts uh, Organization. So I'm doing a collage. I'm actually doing the art part, and she's doing the writing part. And so we got together to talk about the project and compare notes of where we're at. And then we decided to go visit Winter Street Studios, the Sawyer Yards Art District, and just and you I love know that just place. kind of yeah I, it had been forever since we just walked an art gallery and just took in art and just enjoyed it you know just partook and so it was great because we walked all of the different areas some of the studios were open only a handful but the you know the walls there the the hallways are always full of art and you know it was it was just wonderful so I I spent saturday just taking in art which is great and then i worked on my art which you know doesn't really compare okay <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty pathetic in comparison but you know it was great it, it's it's going to be a fun project and you know so yeah i don't know uh when they announced the collaboration thing this image came into my head and i was like okay i need to just do it and so i did crazy i love it i love it russell what did you do this weekend? So I'm in Santa Rosa Beach, Florida today. I've been here all weekend. I'll be here all week. Put my pictures up. I got it. Uh, my son and I walked uh, the Sunset Beach last night. My granddaughter, Vivi, this morning woke me up at 7 o'clock and said, Pops, you said we were going to go get my whatever that thing is today. Mama. So... She made me get dressed, take my coffee, walk over, and buy this for her. Get it blown I love up. It. This morning, she's already at the beach. And I love it. this is all my granddaughters, my genetically identical twin grandbabies, and my Vivi. And this was getting them ice cream two nights ago. So we're busy. We're having a I great love time. It. I love it. You're getting your granddad on and oh, it's just the cutest thing to me. I love it. The fact that she woke you up. Oh, I just love it. When my kids wake me up, you know, it's kind of one of those some days. I like it more than others. Yeah, but when it's your granddaughter, it's okay. I know. My mom says. Especially when she says, get up, be with me. 
go buy me this. You're going to do it. It's good. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. I'm so jealous of where you are. And what about you? I am so jealous of all of you because you guys had this, all of you had these amazing things you did this weekend. And here's my exciting list. Okay. Besides writing and editing, cause working on a book always, you guys know that how that goes. Uh, call the pot, pack wrap pod storage units because my mother-in-law is moving up north in Washington and I needed to help figure out why the pods aren't being delivered, why we're getting charged all this extra rent, all these crazy prices getting tacked on the bill. So I had to go through three layers of customer support to get to the one person that would help. So that was like hours. Then go out into my office where we're getting new flooring and tear out, help my husband tear out all the carpet and scrape up all the all that crap, which was so much fun and dirty and dusty. And I love that. Um, and then after that, <clears throat> we have made the decision to change banking, our banks. And I don't know, you guys know if you have a business and you have all direct deposits coming in and all your bills automatically coming out. Oh my gosh, we had to get a whiteboard and start planning out how this whole thing's going to go. Like we're, we're taking over, you know, a country or going to the moon just to change banks. So that was another half a day of just racking our brains for all the crap we have to do to make this change. And I'm terrified because Amazon has a record of sometimes giving authors trouble when they're switching their direct deposits around and different things. So now it's like, well, let's make sure we have enough money set in somewhere in case <clears throat> Amazon says, no, you're not really Aunt Charles. We're not going to give you your money for a while unless you prove it. So at one point midway through, we said, why are we doing this again? Was there a reason we really wanted to do this? But there, there is legitimate. The bank we have is way up in Washington where we used to live and we can't go to any branches. So it's time, you know, down in Arizona, we got to be able to go to a bank after all every now and then. So that was my exciting weekend. I did watch the new uh, Predator movie, Prey. I got to see that. Oh, that was so much fun. I love the Predator series. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I loved it. As soon I as I knew it. that existed, as soon as I knew that was out there in the world, I was like, ooh, I need to watch that. I know. I know. And remember in the very first Predator, at the end when he throws over the musket, you know, the hand, the handgun musket as his the souvenir. Second well, uh, in the commercial for Prey, uh, I saw somebody with one of those. And I thought, I wonder if that's the one. That 200 years later, he throws over to the other human. So yeah. that was pretty cool. It's exciting. Um, so you've watched it, Fern, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. And has. everybody has already. Yeah, died. we're nerds. I'm late. Me yeah. too. But I was trying to, I do this thing where it's like, you have to get your work done because if not, I would sit there on the couch all day long and just, you know, watch movies over and over and over all, especially the old ones. I've been, I've been hot like you guys, you know, summer here in Arizona and I have the thing out, the Kurt Russell thing, because I feel like I really need to cool down and I'm going to watch the thing. And then I think, really, you're just looking for an excuse to just sit and watch this movie. Okay. Again, again. How, when did you move to Arizona? Have you mm. seen the monster dust storm as a monster dust storm? The one uh, where a, a hundred miles up, you see this wall of dust heading towards you. Have you had one of those yet? I'm up in the mountains. I'm up in Prescott instead oh, of down, to, you there. know, down in uh, Phoenix where my brother lives. Yeah. I haven't experienced one because I'm like, get the heck out of there when I know it's coming, you know, or if I hear anything, cause I don't want to kill my car with dust and all, you know, all the stuff, but you, they do show them on the news all the time, especially this time of year. Cause we're in monsoon season. So like every day this week, we're supposed to get rain and we have bugs this, you know, we're, we're going up against Florida for the bugs right now in Texas. Yeah. It's like huge cockroaches. Huge everything are out. Our screen at night is like a science experiment if the light's on, you know. Ew. But that's, that it's last for about a month. So we need to talk about our podcast for a second. Okay. Uh, and we are, like, to our surprise, top 10 <clears throat> independent book podcast in America. We were shocked at that. We're very proud of it. We want to thank everybody that's listening to us. We have more people listening to us during the week on the podcast than watch us on the show. Most people just listen to us. So uh, we want to thank everyone for that. Amy, where can people find us? 
Yes. So you can find us anywhere that you can find a podcast, Amazon Music, Spotify, iHeart, Apple, Google Play, just to name a few, Stitcher, all of those that you can find a podcast on. We are on Good Pods as well. But like Russell said, we are just honestly su su uh, surprised that you uh, you listen to us because we, you know, we're just here doing it because we love it. We love talking to authors. But you guys are more than welcome to come over to our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, or follow any one of us because sometimes watching us is more fun because we can be very animated, especially me. <laughs> I talk with my hands and I control what comes out of my mouth, not what my face says okay that's just how it's a full disclaimer and if you were curious i had people ask me this um while i was at the comic con are you always like this my personality is a lot to handle full disclaimer i am like this all the time that's that's a whole thing i know it's like poor josh <laughs> josh is your husband i am like this poor all the josh. time okay She's, she sells his motorcycles to buy family cars he married her he made she, that choice. I didn't even know. She, every time Josh comes home from work, there's another stray dog or cat in the house. Okay, that is a true statement. That is true. I am an animal <laughs> it's person. Terrible. It's a sucker. I did adopt a dog while he was out of town. He did come home early when I did adopt that dog. Fun fact, that is a true. The motorcycle was his idea. He still has a motorcycle. He didn't need mm -hmm. to. He still has one, so he I, I will not. Apologize. He did not need yeah, to. I will. I will not apologize for that at all. Uh, <laughs> by any by any means. You see, Anne, how she admits everything. <laughs> I did. I get it, though. You know, I have four cats, and it's still not enough. Uh, oh my we, god! We pick four up cats, cats when we travel. We'll go to places for book signings, and if there's kittens around. And we, we, you know, we love to take, grab a kitten and take it on a road trip with us. It's so much fun. And it really socializes that cat. By the time we're home, it's real friendly because it's been stuck in a vehicle doing a road trip with us. So, there you go. Yeah, we've got a cat from uh, Idaho. We've got, we just picked up this summer a kitten in Ohio. So, yeah, we have four. And my husband's like, I thought two, you know, was enough. <laughs> like, he needs, maybe he, one more. He needs to just accidentally tell you that the landlord only allows two cats. So you have to pick two to get rid of. <laughs> oh, he, he loves them just like I do. He just, I think... You know, if I brought another home, that might be the, that might be the final straw. But <laughs> it's just I, I'm always on the lookout because you never know. I mean, we live in Arizona. They go out. We our cats will get outside. So uh, sorry to say that sometimes they don't make it. There's a lot of critters here, you know. And so well, I like and to have plenty. You know, I worry about. I used to. I kept my son's cat for a long time, and the one of the problems with letting your cats out is that they kill songbirds. Right. Know? I worry about that. That's a bad I did thing. not know that. And my black yes. comes out, but he really just prowls because there's another cat out there and he's claiming his turf, I guess. Yeah, he's doing his but thing. But I, I did not know that. I don't want to kill my birds because I got bird feeders. You know, my husband's a big nature person. Okay, so we mm. got bird feeders, trees, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, he's a very so, cool dude. If you would just quit getting stray dogs so he doesn't he's not <laughs> to hey, leave hey. the house. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Anyway, so I, I have um, I have a a husky, and mm -hmm. so the possums in my neighborhood mm -hmm. that used to come by my house have learned mm -hmm. that that it is not wise to cross this yard <laughs> because <laughs> she hunts them down, man. She hunts them down, and and uh, she's as smart as a human. Burns dog is as smart as a human. Brilliant. And she talks like then, a human. She does. We have huge conversations. I mean, I love how Huskies can just chat with you. But before that, I had Arwen, who was a German Shepherd lab mix, and she was a bird killer because mm. she would just nab them right out of the out of the air. I mean, she just, you know, I don't even know. Next thing I know, she's got feathers all over her mouth. It's adorable. But I mean, oh. not for the bird, of course. Yeah, not, not for, not I mean, there for a bird. Lot of, there was a lot of bird corpses mm. that had to be. Yeah. But, I do have. You know, one of my cats, she talks like R2-D2 to me. Um, she's the only talker of the group, and she does this. So I always pretend I'm like C-3PO, and I talk R2-D2, you know, because oh, she's so it. funny that way. She's hilarious. <laughs> but, you know, we've been doing um, – one of our cats had got into it. He thought, you know, it was the boy – 
he thought he was pretty tough. He was going to go out and stay out late at night and party. And he came home in the morning, something had got him. I think he got into it with a coyote. And so, you know, we went to the doctor thing and he's really, he's really skeptical about going out now, which is good. Learn that you're not, you know, you lost a life, you got eight more. But we, they've been hanging out a lot inside because it's warm and you know, so much hotter out right now with the summer. But I was looking out the back door the other day and there goes, uh, under our back porch, there goes two skunks. Boop, 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 boop. And I was like, no. And then I started pounding on the door and I'm like, wait, don't do that. You know, because you don't want to scare a skunk. But anyway, so now I'm like, how do we get two skunks that are probably having babies under our back porch out of there? This is going to be a disaster. Ooh. Oh my yeah, God. my my uh my husky caught her. Well, she attempted at a skunk, and she ended up getting sprayed, hmm. and she smelled skunky for a long time, long yes. time. She's and a very famous course, skunk dog. <laughs> yes, Russell Russell came up with a whole like series of of stories about skunk dog, and I'm like, my poor husky now has a reputation. <laughs> oh, skunk dog that's hilarious skunk dog. it was awesome that story was awesome <laughs> I read it. it is a great great story but speaking of stories Fern let's get Ann Charles talking about all of her books yeah let's do okay so Ann you're a writer obviously because you're on author talk so talk to me about what kind of writing do you do I mean I was looking on your website and they all look awesome but tell me a little bit about your your different series and what you uh, what you enjoy writing? Oh boy. Okay. So if I get going too long, tangent, just give me a hand side. You know, pretend you're dying or something, and I'll I'll shut up at any point. But so yeah, I I started out trying years and years and years ago trying to write romance, and oh. I I was Did horrible. You have at any it. alcohols? <laughs> No, I mean that we learned. We that's learned. Amy's actually, word. Actually, no, no, I did. I I used the name for the second book I wrote, and his name was Wayne. It's named after my grandpa. I thought it'd be great to have a hero named after my grandfather. My critique group hated him so much they made me promise never ever to use that name in any story ever again. That's how bad he was. That's how bad I was because I wrote this <laughs> hero that they hated that much. Wow. So learned a lesson there. Um, didn't want to write. I tried writing romance. I tried really hard, but I just don't emote enough. I get to the point where I'm like, okay, let's just have a conversation and fix this communication problem. And then we can move on with our lives. And I'm not saying that's all romance. That's just me. My, my crappy romances were like that way back when. So I switched gears about book five and said, hey, let's try writing some, some mystery because I always enjoy that more, you know, a little bit of suspense, you know, mystery, figuring out a puzzle. So I switched gears, killed somebody. It worked so much better than that whole romance thing. But because I love romance, there's always still a romance plot throughout because I do like it. And as long as I can do it, you know, as a kind of a subplot, then I, I think I do much better at romance. If I just only have to deal with that, then I have a problem. But and anyway. Let's face it. I mean, let's face it. If you if you haven't contemplated murder, you really haven't been in love. I mean, you know, <laughs> murder, murder and love, they go together. I okay? think they the murder together. thing came in about the time I was divorcing my first husband. So there might be oh. a tie-in. I yes. don't know. I, so. Yes, those people needed to die. But, you yeah. know... We we're we're smart enough, Anne, to where we don't want to wear orange. It's not the new black for us. <laughs> it's okay, not so, the new black, right? But we can no. have, but we can murder them in fiction. We can murder right. them in fiction as much as we want. Right. So so I kept trying. I mean, I kept working this, and it turns out, you know, I write mixed genre. These books are not one or the other. They're, you know, it's labeled like the Deadwood mystery because there is mystery, and a lot of times you have to pick a team to to be in bookstores or to be in anywhere. They kind of need somewhere mm -hmm. to go. But early on, when we were, um, I had an agent. We were submitting to publishers. They'd say, you know, could you choose mystery? Could you choose romance? Could you choose suspense? Just choose something. Quit throwing all this together and mixing it up. And that was back mm -hmm. in the like the late 90s, early 2000s, when they, they didn't like mixed genres so much. They wanted to put it on a yeah. shelf somewhere. We didn't have Amazon where you could have all these different categories. It was just, right. we need to figure out where to shelf this thing, how we're going to sell it, how we're going to market it. So um, I was hitting walls all over the place. Um, wrote book five. I wrote book six. Um, I wrote book seven. And finally, 
at book seven, I had where I had enough mystery, they felt, but then I threw in a little ghost and then I threw in, you know, still you have that romance in there. And I said, this is what I do. I can't change this. So we, we had a lot of luck with a wonderful editor at one of the big houses and we pushed all the way up to the final acquisition meeting. And then the marketing came in and said, it's set in the Midwest. We don't think there's a big enough audience. So that was like a year long process. And, you know, I, that tragedy was followed by me drinking too much wine um, and then at, at a later time, not drunk driving, but I was driving down to Oregon, getting pulled over for going too fast. So it was like a bang up weekend, of boom, boom, boom. But, you know, I stood up, got got going again and thought, OK, let's do this whole independent small press thing and, and put oh. the books out on Amazon. This was back in you know 2010 when it was oh. really just going and boom. Started out that way, formed a small press with a partner, started building, and that book that was shot down went two big national awards. It was Nero Departed in Deadwood, and that book won a big award for mystery and a big award for romance. So nice. it was national awards, and I thought, oh, let's do it. Let's try this. And, you know, it just started that way. And for three years, I ran as, you know, a co-publisher, and we had other authors. And then we, I, I realized I can't do all this. Um, like Amy, I had two kids two young kids at that time. And there's only so much time of the day and running a publishing house with other authors in it. And then writing books and publishing my own, I was hitting the limit and a husband and a, a full-time job still then. So I was getting four to five hours of sleep a night, drinking lots of coffee, Red Bulls, doing what I could. And I finally just said, something's gotta go. And we decided to move to Arizona at that time and I'm finishing a book and I got this whole thing going. Yeah. So like Amy, I'm piling stuff on all at the same time making myself crazy and just yeah. decided no more publishing house. So went forth. And you know what? I own. love that you, I, lo I love that because, you know, so much of our stress comes from things we schedule on ourselves. You know, we do have, you know, I mean, jobs that, right. you know, give us work and we have to get it done, but there's stuff that we pile on ourselves that we, yes that we, you know, can remove. And so I think it's a wonderful thing for people to occasionally just take time to look at your life. What can I remove? What doesn't need to be here? What is just busy yes. and not productive, you know, not right. actually productive towards our dreams. So I think that's awesome that you did that. So, yeah, it was a huge shift. Um, I just took my own books and left. Um, and I had a contract uh, Russell, you'll pre appreciate this. I had a big, long, like 40 page contract for my books that I'd done when we I formed this publishing house with my partner so that I could do this. I must have had a loophole in mind from the beginning. So per the contract, it took my books. I left and I started out then going to solo from there. So I went way off tangent because I realized now your question was tell me about the books and what kind well, they are. Well, I love that. I mean, we did. We talked about the books and how they came I think to this be. was important stuff that, Fern, mm -hmm. that you and Fern have talked about to well, start fun, off with. Fun because facts, you know, we Yeah, we like rabbit holes. So Okay, good. Yeah. I'm a rabbit hole yeah. queen. We're good with rabbit holes. No, but I think it's awesome because, you know, it's interesting always for our our uh, audience to know a little bit of like, how did you get to where you are? Because every author's journey is different. And, mm -hmm. you know, I love your what you shared with us about the struggle with the with trying to get published with a traditional publisher, with one of the big houses, you know, and and the awareness of, you know, how much time it took. I mean, you spend a significant amount of time waiting and going oh, through yeah. the different steps and stuff before you realized, okay, that's not going to happen. Right. And so right. I think it's important. There's so many of our, of our author listeners that are eager to get everything done. They want everything super fast, but time, this, this is not a quick process. This, this no, I mean, I, I started in the late nineties, 1990s, um, starting to try to get an agent and a publisher to go the route and do it the traditional way. I really, that was, you know, I was kind of at that time frame before everything had shifted so much more with indies being so much, you know, a, a possibility. So yeah, there were 10 years there of trying to get in. I've got, a, I was just showing my kids a couple of weeks ago, I came across a box full of the rejection letters from agents. I said, look at all these rejection letters I have. I mean, I was trying so hard to do the traditional and do it this way route. And I just kept hitting walls. And 
during that time, that wasn't, you know, 10 years of just, I mean, I wrote seven, seven books plus in that time that, you know, some got published later after I worked on them more, others will never get published, but it was all part of that learning and learning to persevere, I think more than anything and not give up. Cause I had two, two babies during that time in the mid two thousands, I had two little ones come through and I wanted to be a good mom. I didn't want to be an absent mom. Um, so there was a real pull, but you know, that was during the, uh, what was it? 2008, lots of layoffs and stuff like that happening. Oh, yeah. While the husband, the, the company my husband worked for laid him off. He was one and we had two little kids. So it was like, what are we doing? Um, and we just decided, Hey, you stay home. My job's secure. We got to keep going this way. So, you know, the whole, I'm a mom. I, I have to take the, I, you know, my kids are breastfed. I had to take the pump to work. I had to do the whole thing. But I had really cool employers that knew the situation and were working with me and they were cheering me on on this writing front, too. They knew I was trying to do this for a living. So I had so much wonderful support from coworkers, managers, all kinds of people, family. Everyone was trying to go, come on, you can do it. Don't give up. So it wasn't just me. It, it took a, you know, a bunch of people helping. And my husband was huge. I mean, you know, that spouse, if the spouse is not with you, you're in trouble. But if you have the support mm -hmm. and the help of someone it makes a big difference too. It certainly does. And I mean, it is. And many times people have this idea that writers are kind of in isolation. We, we work in, in our little hole somewhere, you know, on our keyboards and stuff, but it's a team effort getting a book out there, getting your writing career done. It's a team effort. It's a community. And right. so it's wonderful that you had that support. You know, one of the things I was looking at when I was uh, surfing your, your website and that I absolutely love is you have this link where you can download a book list in chronological order, like how you should read them, like the order right. and, and stuff. And I was like, oh my God, I love that because see, I'm, I'm the kind of person that has got to read things in order because, <laughs> you know, I'm Me like too. that, yeah. you know, and, and so I just love that you offer that to your readers. Well, what made the, you decide to do that? My worlds. So I have these different series, five series that I, I'm writing. And one of them I co-write with my husband, Sam Lucky, but they're all the same and Charles world. So they're, you know, different stories, different whole things going on, but characters will cross over uh, in the Deadwood series. The best friend of the heroine is cousins to the heroines in the, in the Jackrabbit Junction series. So she goes back and forth. So I, from early on, I realized, Oh, Hey, I need to really watch dates because these books, if I'm having characters crossing over, we need real time or readers are going to go, what you got this all messed up, you know, it, and, it, and it takes the fun and the, the real feeling out of the reality of, you know, even though it's a fiction world, you know, you want to escape into it and really get down in there and enjoy um, the whole world. So all the series have crossovers in one way or the other. So we thought, okay, let's list them in chronological order so that if you're a real diehard like me that likes to really go, you know, one, 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 you know, the start at the very beginning, you can read the first series, like the Undertaker series, which takes place in the 1870s. This is the prequel to the Deadwood series. So I just thought, you know, um, maybe it's time to do this. And I had some readers who wanted to know how does it all go. So that was kind of what happened. Okay, I like that whole idea, but I also think it's a little funny. It's a little like, this is the order you do it. You need to do it in order. It's like my granddaughter, before uh, she went on her beach vacation, she put out every toy and every piece of clothes in the exact <laughs> order that they were supposed to be packed in. God help her mother if her mother packed them in the wrong order. <laughs> little does she know her little sister twins are on the verge of destroying that whole oh, organized yeah. world she's in. Oh, yeah. So, but I do love that concept. And also, uh, you know, I think it's amazing as we wait for Fern to reorganize here. <laughs> I think it's amazing that uh, you have written so many books within the same universe that that's something you have to be conscious of. Yeah, it's, when I started out, this was not the plan. Um, and I actually wrote, you know, the first of the Jackrabbit Junction books. Wait, I wrote wait, it. wait, before you get too much in it, 
Yeah. What is these series about? What is this universe? <laughs> you haven't told us. Okay, so, oh boy. It's a mix of supernatural, but then there's some that aren't. Um, and then there's some that's really crazy shape-shifting. So I have, let's start time-wise. Then we'll go with the one I co-write with my husband, the Deadwood Undertaker series. It's set in the 1870s, Deadwood, South Dakota, just like the HBO Deadwood. Um, I actually spent a lot of time growing up there. My mom still lives there. So that's why Deadwood plays such a role in my world because I go there all the time still and I've been there since I was a kid. But anyway, back then Gold Rush was on, you know, so it's it's a Western feel, but it's also supernatural because uh, the Deadwood world that I've, I started way back when is a supernatural world. So we've got creatures of all kinds, including ghosts, but that's not just it. There's just all kinds of crazy creatures and, and more and, and beings coming into this world. But it's the 1870s. So we mixed a Western with this whole supernatural crazy stuff, which is so much fun. Um, I enjoy Westerns, but I also love science fiction. I love suspense. I love, you know, supernatural. So boom, we're doing it all together. So that's one. And then you go a hundred plus years later and it gets longer the more we go into the future, right? 150 now. <laughs> um, and there's the contemporary Deadwood that I have, which is set now uh, close to now. I mean, keep in mind, I started writing this back in the two th early 2000s, but it's an ongoing, I'm on, we're going on book 13 next in that series. Um, and it's contemporary with um, uh, Violet Parker. She's a real estate agent with two young kids. She's a single mom. The dad was a piece of crap that didn't want anything to do with him. No offense to men. There's other great men in the series, but that's the way it, this starts. And she's just trying to raise these nine-year-old twins and do the best she can. And she moves in with her aunt up in Deadwood and come to find out, you know, Deadwood's full of ghosts. And if you ever visit there in real life, it's a real town. It's so much fun. There are ghosts everywhere. Every place is haunted. It's not, you know, someone will come up to me, you know, my house is haunted. And I'll say, well, I'm not really surprised. Because just about everywhere in Deadwood is haunted. They had such a rough, you know, and tumble history with the gold rush and all the stuff going on that there were a lot of, you know, deaths and murders. So if you if you like ghosts, it's a lot of fun. So anyway, here's this whole series of this woman trying to make a living. But every place she sells, you know, so many of these houses are haunted, but she can't see ghosts. She seems to be a dud. So you're only in her head. You have to go with her. Do you believe this person that there's a ghost here or do you think they're crazy? Like she kind of does, you know, so it's a lot of fun because you don't get to you don't know for sure. Like I said, we're only ever in Violet's head. So as a writer, it's so much fun to have that where my lens is this and this is what you're going to see, you know, just through here. Now you determine what you believe and, you know. Vi's going to tell you what she believes, but you determine what you think. So that's the, the Deadwood mystery series. And as that continues on, she comes to find out she's not just a dud. She's she's comes from a long line of killers. And, and I don't want to give anything more away in the whole story. So it's it's more like I'm a what? You know, and so it just as it builds, though, it builds to that. Um, and you just keep learning more about Violet and she's trying to do what she needs to do because remember it's a supernatural, you know, world in this mystery, supernatural, thriller, suspense, romance, I threw it all together. So that's the Deadwood series. Now the Jackrabbit series, Jackrabbit Junction mystery series is set in Southeastern Arizona. And it's the, the three sisters Violet grew up next to up in South Dakota have come South because their grandfather and his army buddies went down there to find some women in an RV park. They're lonely. They wanted a woman. So the first sister went down in the first book, Claire sent by their mother and aunt to keep their grandfather from picking up a gold digger. Cause he's got some money. So yeah. she's down there and they don't want her, these three old army, you know, guys, they don't want her there, but they treat her like one of them. So she's smoking cigars with them playing, you know, euchre and different stuff, just trying to fit in <laughs> while they're going, you know, they're not going to lay lighten up on what they like. She's, she's horning in on their business. So that's how that all starts. And come to find out this RV park was owned um, by this guy, um, Joe Martino and his wife is now a widow and Joe died a, couple, a year or two ago and she's about to lose the RV park. He wasn't the, the, antiques dealer he said he was to her he was really skimming he was running stolen goods and then skimming off the top of all of them and taking treasures and bury them all over the desert he has mines he has all this stuff where he's hidden all kinds of these treasures only the treasures come from different thieves 
who are not happy about their goods not showing up and disappearing. And so they're coming hunting for the stuff now that he's dead. Well, uh, Claire and now her sisters, as each book goes on, are all down there, all three of them. And here comes these, you know, this is where the mystery and kind of suspense comes. Is all these guys coming in, and, you know, not disguised, but killers coming in. They want their diamonds. They want their gold bars. They want whatever he stole from them. And they're going to find it. And you're, you know, they're at the park in the way where all these treasures are. So it's really a mix of treasure island, which I love, and uh, some adventure. You know, I always loved archaeology, Indiana Jones. So it's all a mix of that thrown together. But they know each other. And the best friend of the uh, Violet in the Deadwood series comes down because she's the cousin of the girls in the, and I say girls, but they're in their 30s, in, in the Jackrabbit Junction series. So that's that crossover where we're going back and forth. And they know Violet and Violet knows them um, because they grew up next to each other. So then, and then another series, I'm trying to, let's keep going. So if you want to interrupt <laughs> me, just interrupt me. But um, no, this is cool. I love how they, they, they are connected because that's, when you create a world as a, you're a world builder, right? You're a world right. builder. You created a world. And so now you're, you can populate it in a myriad of directions, really. Right. So it's awesome that these all intersect. Yeah. And I just, I don't have supernatural or paranormal in the Jackrabbit series because I don't really need it. And, you know, I don't know if someday that will happen, but at this point in time, I like having the different flavor a little bit for readers who don't want too much of that supernatural, but still love the mystery and the adventure and all that. And the Morgan sisters are wild and crazy. They're always landing in jail for different things. Sometimes they put themselves in jail because they're mad at one of the deputies or something and they're protect. I mean, they're just a riot. They are this, these three late, three women that they love each other, but they're sisters at the same time. And their mom is kind of really crazy, uh, a pain in the butt for them. But they're all dealing with all that together. And they're all down there in Arizona. So it's it's so much fun to write. So then I have Violet's brother. He, uh, Quint, is down. He's a, takes, uh, I can't think of the word, but photographer goes all over travel, you know, National Geographic type of thing. Uh, and he goes down for a, a a job down in the Yucatan at a Maya dig site where Dr. Angelica Garcia works. Um, she's running the site. She's hardcore. You know, she's, it's not easy to be a female in that world. And you're pretty strict when you run a site. And her dad, Juan, helps her. He's an archaeologist too. Um, their, her mom was as well, but she passed away years ago. So anyway, we go down into there and this is all a mix. This is your Indiana Jones where it's archaeology, it's adventure, it's treasure hunting again. And it's supernatural because it ties in with Violet's world more because he's her brother. So we have some things that are they're both dealing with. And so it's it's a whole other feel. You're down there. Um, it's always hot and sweaty. I don't know, you know, if you've been to Mexico. Every time I've gone, I'm always hot and sweaty the whole time. So when I write this book, I like to write it in the winter because then I can be nice and hot and sweaty when it's cold here in the mountains. But anyway, so we have this whole... <laughs> tie in with the supernatural and the mystery and she's like i said he's violet's brother so he shows up in deadwood and people keep waiting for violet to go to the yucatan so we have that and then the final one is a crazy quick novellas it's the silly circus series and they're shapeshifters but they are the ones right. um shapeshifters on a traveling circus train and these are the ones they're not your normal um circus they're animals, but humans, <laughs> they're not your normal circus people. Um, there's a bear who swallows fire, but he's afraid of fire, so he struggles. Oh. There's a rabbit who can do all kinds of different voices, and he sits and he reads as a rabbit Shakespeare to the crowd. He reads all this stuff, but and they can shift into human form. So this is crazy cartoon world in my head when I write these. I just feel like I'm watching um, like an R-rated cartoon. How does this tie in with my others? You'll see, because one of the characters is creating this. So in time, ah. we'll find out what's going on and why this is coming out. That's the whole thing wrapped up in one crazy world. That is very cool. So talking about cartoons and illustrations, um, I noticed that you have like a little section too of like illustrations. So do you do your own drawings? Are you your own illustrator? for? Because I mean, your covers are really fun looking. My brother is an artist. Uh, so way back when, when I was trying to get into the big houses, um, you know, you have to go with whatever they choose for your cover. 
and yeah. I was getting shot down and shot down and we, and then I got shot down by that last final time. I was deciding to go, you know, kind of small press indie feel. And he said, and he's always, he's drawn since, you know, he was a kid. I used to sit and watch him draw when I was four and he was eight. And he said, you know, I'd love a shot at doing your covers if you're open to that idea. And I said, yeah, I would love that. By then he published in several Grateful Dead magazines with some of his art and different things. And so he drew three different covers for Nearly Departed in Deadwood, the first book we went with. We chose which one. I really love the creepy clown cookie jar with a skeleton hand coming out. Um, and I, that might be one of the illustrations I have in there. But we knew early on people don't like clowns. Um, and they'll not, yeah. they'll, they'll they, not they, buy a book because scary. of a clown. clown. Yeah. Clowns are scary. Yeah. This was before it came out. And I just, I knew from the few people I talked to, we can't go with the clown because nobody will buy the book. <laughs> they'll go, no, it's, well, people will, but a lot will. So we picked the one with the legs, um, which is the cover. And ever since he's been doing all the artwork. So he'll do different pieces of artwork. We'll come together with the idea. He'll do the artwork. Give me the original art, which he does with, colored pencil or whatever he medium he wants you put up some of the artwork because i mean th some of this is so it's really cool and it's a and it has a very definitive flavor which i think works for your series you know um because that's one of the key things with with the uh, covers of course is that they have to say what the book is about right, right? it's the Honor. it's the and brand it's yeah yeah it's the, a, the brand and i've actually a wonderful thing had amazon reps different ones that i've talked to like when kindle world was out saying something about you know um i know a book that's ann charles just by seeing the cover alone mm -hmm. yes and that so, is that is the power of branding so you've done a really great job with that well it's just um, all him he's my only He's the illustrator. And then my husband is, uh, we've had different graphic artists over the years helping, taking his art, making it. But now for the last about four or five years, my husband's the graphic artist that works with the art and then creates the covers. So we have a good team. We all work together and have fun. Very cool. Very, very cool. Well, and hopefully Amy can put up a, a couple examples before it's time I, for us to my, go. I know. My computer was running slow. And yes, Russell, I closed all of my windows. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I did close it. I did. I know. Do more better. More better. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. I got it. Okay. I got it. It's, it's so, yeah, we do. And every book has uh, just about every book has illustrations, his illustrations throughout. I do about six to eight that he'll draw that are inside the books. So he goes forth and, you know, we talk about what illustrations I want, kind of space them out through the book. And he, I give him some ideas and then say, go forth and draw because, you know, he's an artist just like, you know, an author is. And he, if, if you give him the freedom to really think about, you know, what he wants to do, he's so, it's so fun to talk to him because he'll go, I see it from this perspective. I see this. I think if we bring this up, you know, it's just a whole other way of viewing it that you don't even think about it unless you're an artist. So, but yeah, you can see so many of the books um, are his, his drawings that, um, you know, it just, it's, it's so much fun. And, and I'm big on working with family. Uh, my sister-in-law is my right hand assistant. She does all kinds of stuff, helping all the time. My, my sister, my oldest sister is my bookkeeper and she also sells the books at different events in Ohio. Uh, my brother's the artist, my husband, it's our business together. We both do all kinds of things. Kids help out whenever we, you know, need them or make them at a book sign and they do their part. Yeah. My mom used to be, my later. mom was our saleswoman in Deadwood. Um, she's getting too old now, but she for 10 years helped me build there in Deadwood. So the joke is when somebody new comes in the family, what are your skill sets and how can you contribute to this? <laughs> you need, you need their resume, right? So you can see where they fit. See, I love that. I love that. It's like a whole family affair. And I just love hearing the whole story. I could sit here and listen to you talk about, you know, a brief summary of what all this, all the series that you've created are and how they cross over. And you just, you talk so much as if, you know, they're the long lost BFFs. And you're just like, this is what's happened in this crazy world, right? <laughs> it is like I that. Absolutely. Yeah. I know. I absolutely love it. We'll have to have you back on so we can dive deeper into it and all of your other books coming out in the future. But you guys, tonight on Through the Eyes of Authors at 7 p.m., we are doing a collabor collaboration. Words are hard on Monday sometimes for me. Night. So come. And if you have anything 
that you want us to share, you want to celebrate. Tonight is the night for all of us to get together and share each other's things and make it a social media collaboration party. So if you want to bring your own drink, coffee, whatever, I'm not going to question what's in your cup, okay? It's one hour for us to kind of see how we can celebrate and share everybody else's stuff going on in the group because we want to be make sure that we are the group effort, right? Sharing and sharing is caring. In Amy's world, that's how we function. That is tonight on Through the Eyes of Authors. My closing comments, questions, statements. Russell, I'm going to kick it to you first. Okay, Anne, great job. I love the way you described your universe. Fern will enjoy listening to it later. <laughs> Would you tell the listeners one more time where they can find your books? So the easiest place is my website, the one that Amy and Fern put up. It's www.annecharles.com. And there's no E in Anne. It's just annncharles.com. <clears throat> and you go to the books page and you can see them all in the links to the different platforms because we're all over the place. I hang out on Facebook a lot. I'm older, so I'm moving into the new ones more and more. But Facebook is still where it's easiest for me. And, and I have a lot of fans there so and, and reader friends. So you can find me there. But I'm also on, I've done a little on TikTok, getting into that. Instagram, I do a lot of photography there, all kinds of stuff. So I just look for me out there and you can usually find something with Anne. Yes, oh, thanks, Amy. The link is down in the comment section below. And for all of y'all listening, it is in the description um, of what you guys clicked on. But Fern, closing comment statement questions from you. I'm just excited of all these series. I love the crossover and the way they're all connected. I'm going to enjoy getting to know some of these awesome characters. And yeah, I'm, I'm just hoping that my um, internet doesn't decide to just cut out again later. <laughs> oh, I want to add one thing. They are all in audio too. I have ebook, print book, audio book. You can order them directly from my store and I'll autograph for you to your mother, how much you're a wonderful kid, whatever you want. But it's all right there. You know, like I said, links are on my website and there are more out there that I don't have. No, I love it. Absolutely love it. And thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come and talk to us about your books. Like I said, we're definitely going to have to have you back on because this has been a wonderful conversation. I know that we all are dying to dive in deeper, but we are on a limited time schedule. Right. No one wants their time not to get involved. Okay. <laughs> so but we hope that everybody has a fantastic Monday, a great rest of your week, and we'll catch you guys all next Monday. Bye, everybody.